Welcome to this week's episode of FinTrail for in Crime Spotlight. I'm Keir Aitchison and I'm joined by James Nurse. So we've seen some legislative change come into force at the UK at the start of this month, which I think deserves five minutes of our time this week to discuss. Um, on the 15th of December, we saw the Secretary of State put forward an order which was approved by resolution in each of the Houses of Parliament that has amended the Proceeds of Crime Act. So James, do you want to talk to us about what the amendment is? Sure, I guess quick reminder on Jack Dammels in general, uh, so everyone that presumably understands, you know, a defence against money laundering uh, where you're looking to kind of move money on in a, in a variety of different ways. So you're looking for a defence against the Proceeds of Crime Act to, you know, move it to a suspense account, make the ongoing payments, return the source potentially as well. So um, ultimately that's where you might seek a defence against money laundering unless there is an exemption, of course, which we're going to talk about now in terms of that change. So um, if you, the change specifically that Kira has mentioned is that uh, the exemption has changed from £250 to £1,000 now. So, uh, and that is actually for everyone. So um, I think if everyone remembers previously before 2021, um, actually they had this definition of deposit taking institutions, which has been removed. Um, so actually, um, you know, the £250 threshold applied for everyone then onwards. So um, payment institutions, EMIs and, and everyone. Um, but actually now, obviously that's now £1,000. Um, so, um, and, and applies to everyone and that deposit and taking institutions bit is, is, continues to be, you know, irrelevant and obsolete. So um, that is the change and the specifics of the change. But, but Kira, maybe you could explain why have they changed it as well? I think it's a positive step in the right direction because it looks at increasing the efficiency and the effectiveness of the DAMO regime for many, so for law enforcement, for financial services firms, and also importantly for consumers as well too. Like I think we looked at um, the Home Office impact assessment um, and the UK FIU received over 105,000 DAMOs in 2020 to 21 alone, oh. <laughs> which get a 41% increase on the previous year. And it ranged in everything from like one page right up into the billions of pounds um, and actually all of the demos that they're seeing probably only about a thousand of those were actually progressed to law enforcement using acid denial um, within them so I think this it seems a reasonable and a sensible increase to look at it so it will bring benefits to look at freeing up law enforcement resource to focus on opportunities leading to um, the asset seizure and delivery um, it will impact um, the cost savings for the regulated sector as well too and it allows both law enforcement and financial services to look at limiting, um, so focusing the resource on limited resource on um, the right areas and probably bring us more um, to that sort of true intelligence led um, regime that we're looking to um, give, so reducing that burden. Um, I think obviously no doubt we'll reduce the number of DAMLs that will be sent in and that will make a difference, um, but it also is sort of looking at the impact it will have on consumers as well too. So it is a real like impact for them um, and that will certainly um, where there is legitimate assets being seized and the proceeds, the time it takes to work through um, that DAML, um, it will mitigate some of that negative economic consequences for those individuals too. Yeah, cool. So I guess why we're talking about it then before we wrap up mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, this came into play last week. Presumably everyone knows about it already, but just in case you, you didn't, uh, um, what we're saying you think need to think about doing is make sure your procedures are updated. So, you know, your SARS um, kind of reporting process is that up to date. And ultimately, does everyone know about it? And are you uh, actually kind of uh, reporting under the actual correct um, kind of process as well now? And I think importantly as a reminder, required disclosure, so SARS would still need to be made regardless of this increase in the dam expression where there is suspicious activity. Um, there may be other exemptions that might apply, but regardless in this scenario, SARS would still need to be um, submitted to allow law enforcement to take the appropriate inquiries. But um, I think we can all agree setting the threshold at a more appropriate level to reflect the current um, landscape, increasing cost of living from when it was set in 2005 is an important step in in focusing um, both public and private sector resources. So that's it for us today. Thank you for your time. Bye.